Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, we're going to be spending a couple minutes today talking about Senate Bill 5078, the FFL liability bill. Why? Well, it's premised on these legislative findings. The legislature finds that the irresponsible, dangerous, and unlawful business practices by firearms industry members contributes to the illegal use of firearms and not only constitutes a public nuisance as declared in Chapter 7.48 of the RCW, but that the effects of that nuisance exacerbate the public health crisis of gun violence in this state. The Washington State Medical Association, the Washington Health Alliance, and the voters of Washington, most recently through approval of Initiative 1639 in 2016, have all noted that crisis. But is any of that really true, or is this just hyperbole written by a bunch of gun-grabbing left-wingers who want to do nothing more than shut down the FFL industry? Well, what I want everyone on the gun-grabbing left, especially you, Mr. Ferguson, to understand is that the FFL really is the last line of defense. You see, it is the FFL that is tasked with keeping our community safe, and it is the FFL that actually does keep our community safe. Don't believe me? Well, we're going to hear a couple of real life examples today. So let's spend a few minutes and talk about why the FFL is really our last line of defense. Okay, so the issue we're going to be talking about today is Senate Bill 5078, or what I call the Put the FFL Out of Business Act of 2023. Now, I've already gone over these offensive ridiculous legislative findings. So the question then is, is that really the way the gun industry works or is actually the gun industry run by a bunch of amazingly responsible lawful citizens that have your safety in mind and actually go above and beyond what the law requires them to do to ensure safety? Well, what we're gonna do today is hear from a couple of real life examples. We're gonna hear from some people over at the range in Yakima about a sale that they rejected. And we're gonna hear about a sale over at Wade's Eastside Guns in beautiful Bellevue, Washington about a sale they rejected. What do both of these sales have in common? Well, what they have in common is, is that the individual cleared the paperwork. They went through the background check, the paperwork, all those background checks that are there to save lives. Yeah, they would have been allowed to allow that individual to walk out of the gun store, but they didn't. Why? Well, that's the human element that the FFL brings. So without further discussion, let's hear from our guests today. Okay, Hope, I want to talk to you about an incident that uh, took place here on February 18th. You were working that day and something a little out of the normal happened here. So why don't you describe for the viewers what exactly occurred that day? So there was a gentleman that came in and as soon as he walked in, there was a different feeling in the room. There was just an eerie presence. You could tell that something was wrong from the get-go. Um, from the purchase to every day that he came in after that, there was just something wrong. There was um, some sort of feeling that you get in your gut when you know that this situation isn't right. It, it's not going the way it should. It's not the right kind of person that you should be dealing with. Okay, now this person came in, he purchased, I believe, two separate firearms. Mm -hmm and came back a couple of on a couple of other occasions. Were you here each of the occasions that he came in? The only occasion I wasn't here was the very last one. Okay, but now you alerted management, is that right? Mm -hmm. And what was, what, what, have you ever alerted management before about somebody like this in the past? Not like this. So this one was different? Yes. Okay, so who did, who did you talk to when you, when you saw or kind of experienced this uneasiness? So after the entire experience and after he had left, I uh, went into the back and a couple other employees, we all talked together and, you know, a few of us was like, am I the only one that felt that that was weird, that that was just not right? And so after that, I were, actually, were there actually other employees that had, had the same we, bad know, vibe? We, we met into the in the back and realized that everybody felt the same way, and it just wasn't right. There was something wrong about this whole situation. Let me ask you this: you you've been working in the FFL industry how long? Over two years now. Over two years, but you got people here who probably have spent many, many more years on yep. that, and all of you still had that same vibe. It doesn't really matter the level of expertise. Everyone was all feeling the same thing. After the situation, after he was gone, everybody kind of made their way into the back, and we all just huddled up and, and talked to each other and realized that 
this just wasn't the same as any other interaction with a customer. Okay, and then ultimately that led to this star contacting law enforcement, law enforcement doing some digging around and finding out that a person who otherwise would have qualified under all state and federal paperwork to walk out of here with a couple of firearms mm -hmm. was not particularly suitable to be having firearms. Agreed? Agreed. Okay, thank you. Absolutely, thank you. Okay, I'm here with Austin Harlan, owner of The Range here in Yakima. Austin, how are you doing today? Doing great. How are you, sir? Great. Tell the viewers real quickly about The Range, how long you've been in business, and what you all do here. So uh, we opened up in 2014. We've been open uh, almost nine years now. This summer we'll celebrate. Uh, we have a full retail store. We have well over a million dollars in inventory, uh, two full-time gunsmiths, a machinist, uh, full training curriculum, and uh, 15 Bay Range, indoor oh. range. Okay, and you got a lot of people working here. We do, we got 25 employees right now. Okay, and you got some fantastic employees here, don't you? We have some of the best in the state. You do, and I wanna, I wanna talk to you about an incident that took place that really, but for your fantastic employees, this may have actually turned out to be really, really a bad situation. And it's a, it's a sale that began on February 18th in this store. Do you know, you know the sale I'm talking about? I yet? absolutely do. Okay, uh, apparently a, a white male in his early 30s came in here and wanted to purchase two firearms, filled out all the appropriate paperwork, but absent the normal paperwork, there was nothing else really normal about this contact, I understand. Why don't you explain to the viewers what, uh, what your employees were experiencing here on the floor? So this one was a weird one. Uh, I, I've been in the gun industry over 10 years. I've had this feeling probably three times in that entire 10 years, and they definitely had it on this one. It was just an uneasy, just not right something wasn't right and you could just tell it when you were talking to him and looking into his eyes there was there was some malintent there and, and it was uh, it was a bit scary okay now he filled out the 4473 and all the other appropriate paperwork you put in for the background check there's a mandatory waiting period correct and even though we've been critical of waiting periods we could, this is an instance in which the 10 day mandatory waiting period it actually worked made a difference here would you agree with that absolutely okay all right now even though the paperwork goes in and most people would just, you know, wait until the store calls them and says, hey, you know, waiting period's over, come on in and pick your firearms up. This individual, for some reason, kept frequenting the store. Is that right? He did. He come back a couple times looking for his guns and uh, looking a uh, way to get them quicker. And, you know, again, I haven't worked in your industry, but when someone is really anxious to pick up a firearm, is that oftentimes a red flag? It certainly can be, for okay. sure. I mean, people get excited for a new toy, obviously, but... This is different. You can tell. Perhaps this coupled with all the other odd behavior and how he'd made many of your other employees uneasy about this Just was... made it even worse. Okay. Yeah. And, and you know, we talked to Hope earlier, uh, one of your employees that had really kind of, you know, experienced this, but she wasn't alone in that, I understand. No. Everybody that saw him, dealt with him, they all, they all felt the same thing. They actually met up in the back room and talked about it, and then they came to me. Okay. Now... Even though this person keeps coming back, even though he's been told it's a minimum of two weeks before you can pick your firearms up, he's coming back every couple of days. Something else happened. You actually get a call from another FFL about this guy. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Another gun store here in town, actually just a few blocks away, he called and uh, he had gone into the, his store and gave him the exact same uneasy feeling. So he called me and expressed his concerns. Okay. So, so now, and what I want the viewers to understand here is now we got two human components here. We have, we have everyone here at this gun store. We have another FFL. You're both getting the same uneasy feeling. You're talking to each other about it. Yep, we are a community. Right, okay. Absolutely. A, a community that right now is under attack, unfortunately. Correct. Okay. And, but unfortunately, you know, we are a community that cares about people. Okay, and that's one of the points that we're trying to make. So now that you know that somebody else has got the same uneasiness, what's the next step for you here? What do you decide to do? So I start looking into it. I get on Facebook, I get on the internet, I start looking at his name and seeing if I can find any kind of a history or any kind of indication of what his intention may be. And are, is that search successful in any way, shape or form of producing anything? It was actually. It got me a little bit of intel that sent me down, uh, kind of led me down the road of trauma, which might be why he was looking for firearms to complete a certain task. Uh, and that led me to some people that actually knew him and we got in touch with them and got the uh, law enforcement agencies involved immediately. So basically once you started connecting the dots, it was a very short order before law enforcement was involved. The same day. Okay, yeah. <laughs> the same day. I mean, right now. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right, now, and, and I think this is something else I want the viewers to be aware of is that the relationship between the FFL industry and law enforcement is a very close knit, 
symbiotic relationship. That Absolutely. is, I'm assuming that you probably have a lot of police officers cell numbers on speed dial the on your cell phone, the sheriff, the chief and all that. And that's not uncommon in the FFL industry, is it? Absolutely not. Okay. So when you're calling law enforcement saying, hey, I got a concern, this isn't like some random citizen calling in a 911 call. This is they act quickly. They act quickly. Yep, and with everything. Okay, and, and and that again, you would agree, is unique to reputable FFLs like the range. One hundred percent. Okay, so you contact law enforcement. What all? Once law enforcement gets involved, what do we what do we learn about this guy? That when we go all the way back to February eighteenth, everybody here on the floor had an uneasy feeling about. So what he had uh, actually come back from Thailand uh, with the intention to kill his parents and everybody that he could find. And uh, we learned that through the investigation on that day, and uh, we got an indictment. And we got him. We got him taken care of. Okay. And so, so the bottom line is this: but for people like Hope, human beings just having a human experience on the floor working for a good, reputable FFL, but for the fact that you guys have close relationships within the community and with law enforcement, mm -hmm. and but for the fact that there was a statutory mandatory waiting period. Absolutely. This could have turned out really, really bad. It would have turned out really, really bad. From the information that I got, this, this was going to happen. And yet it would seem, though, that what the attorney general is trying to do is take that last line of defense. Away which from is us. Yeah, which is you guys, guys yeah. like you, people like Hope, people like all your employees here. People that care. People that care, you know, human beings, right? right? That they're trying to take that away from the equation. Right. Yeah. And if we would have gone strictly on the information on paper, he would have got it and he would have gone. He actually proceeded. And I told everybody to hold the guns and they are actually still sitting in my office. OK. Well, hey, you saved a few lives. Thanks for everything. Absolutely, sir. Thank you for coming. All right. Hey, listen, I'm here with BZ of Wade's Gun Bellevue Indoor Range. Uh, BZ, why don't you tell us a little bit about this operation? You guys have been in business for a long time and you got a yeah. hell of an operation. Here. Yeah. So Wade's been here in Bellevue at this location for well over 25 years. Uh, we've been servicing the uh, greater Puget Sound and the east side here uh, religiously and, and faithfully for for two and a half decades. And this is where I actually learned to shoot, actually, was right here. So, But I want to talk to you about a sale or a sale that didn't occur yeah. in late January of this year. And actually, you and I ended up having a conversation on the phone contemporaneous with the sale. So tell the viewers what, uh, what kind of tipped you guys off around here. Yeah, so we had a, a young lady come in uh, with her boyfriend. And, uh, you know, boyfriend was pointing out all the different guns and this is the gun that she wants, this is the gun that she wants. And, and we engaged her and, and trying to figure out um, what's the best for her. And boyfriend was kind of leading the conversation and, and leading everything. And she settled on a firearm, does the paperwork, pays for everything. And you know, we're just kind of getting a, our spidey senses are tingling a little bit. So transaction goes through. So on day one, they come in, they choose the firearm, they do all the paperwork. They do the 4473, they do the Washington State pistol transfer application, they pay their money, and now everything goes to the local police department. Right. So that's day one. Okay. Now, second visit, 10 days later, they come to pick up. We have an approval. We have an approval for Which the local by police law, department. You can let that firearm walk out the door with her if you want. Yes. Okay. Yes. And as we're talking, you know, we're, we're asking, you know, um, do you need any magazines, do you need ammo, do you need a holster, do you need everything, anything else? And she's very, very quiet. She's very, very sheepish. She's very, very reserved. And the, again, the boyfriend is kind of leading everything. And to me and to my guys here, it just feels like a straw purchase. It just feels like this is not good. And let me ask you this question. I imagine that being familiar with the industry, being familiar with the retail operations, and being around this community for a number of years gives you in a kind of an extra sixth sense that non-NFFLs are going to have, right? Yeah, yeah. We uh, we kind of we kind of learn the the nuances of 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 how people buy guns, why people buy guns, when they buy guns. Um, and so it, it just pretty good at reading faces and attitudes and stuff. You know, don't it's you, you got to be a good poker player, right? right? right you got to right. be a good poker player. So it this just felt like a straw purchase. It okay. just it just didn't feel good. But the paperwork says the paperwork says that if you guys want to, she can walk out the store with this gun, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But what do you guys 
on your own, with your own discretion, what do you decide to do as a company? So we're the last line of defense. We're the last line of, of defense to make sure that guns do not get into the marketplace uh, into the wrong hands. And so as the, as the boss, as the GM, I just said, no, we're not gonna deliver the gun. Um, we're not gonna deliver the gun. We're not gonna sell you the gun. And she had paid cash, $100 bills. Um, so I said, and I'm not gonna use her name, but I said, you know, hey, Miss Jones, um, we're gonna give you your money back. And she didn't really say anything. Boyfriend, on the other hand. Yeah, what was his reaction? Stomped out of here. Mm. I, I'm, I'm a pretty proficient in cuss words, and I learned a couple new ones that day. <laughs> okay. um, he stomped out of here. He was visibly, visibly upset. But she wasn't. She was not. She was very, again, very sheepish, head down, eyes down. Did you almost have a sense of relief come over her? Well, I'll, I'll tell you about that. Yeah. So I go into the back office. Now, you know, she had paid us cash. So I go into the back office to, to get some funds to refund her 100%, no restocking fees, nothing like that. And I come back out and he's gone. He's off premises. She looks at me, hand to God, tears in her eyes, and thanks me. And she says, BZ, thank you for not delivering this firearm today something bad was gonna happen. Something, this, and, and, and it just, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a father. Um, I see this young woman in crisis and I looked at her and again, not gonna say her name, but I said, Miss Jones, do you need help? Are you in trouble? Do you need help? I said, I can push the button and I can have, you know, I can have authorities here. In no time, right? I can have authorities here in 30 seconds. Right. She says, no, 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 I think I'm good. Okay. Hmm. What did you do with that? So. I gave her her money. Mm -hmm. I said, why don't you hang out for a little bit? You know, we can call the police. We can make sure you're okay. No, 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 I'm good. And she scurries off. Okay. So I immediately call um, a couple different agencies. I, I called uh, the agency here in, in our area, Bellevue, and uh, asked for advice. And, and, and this is one thing I want to jump in and talk about, because I've noticed this too, is that I think what a lot of people don't realize is, is that FFLs have very close tight relationships with law enforcement. Yeah. So it's not like you're just calling the general number. You have officers on yeah. speed dial, you have resources, yeah. because when things need to be addressed by them, sometimes they need to be addressed immediately because of the industry you're in. And there's a level of trust between you and law enforcement yeah. that I don't think the attorney general gives you guys credit for, right? Yeah. And so you're able to reach out and have these really effective communications with Bellevue PD almost instantly, right? Yeah. Okay, so what comes of that? So. You know, they give me some guidance and obviously they tell me, hey, you know, um, this person lives in a different jur jurisdiction, so why don't you call this number? And in fact, they transferred me with them on the line and they get me down to this jurisdiction and I basically replay the story. Okay. And within five minutes, yeah. I was talking with a patrol officer in that jurisdiction and the patrol officer says, you know what, we're going to do a health and welfare check. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's kind of where the story drops off, right? Mm -hmm. Is we've, we've declined the sale, we've refunded the money, uh, people are out of the facility, we've reported what we think is something bad, and then now we wait. So an hour and a half later, my phone rings. And it's this local jurisdiction. Really? It's the officer that I've talked about uh, or talked to, and they go and do a health and welfare check, and she's okay. She's fine. Good. She's, Good. she's distraught. Um, but boyfriend is a bad guy. Oh, what kind of bad guy is he? Well, I, I can't go too deep, but boyfriend is a prohibited person. So he's either a felon or a domestic violence abuser or something. There's something on his record. We're not going to use his name, but, but there is something that absolutely positively prohibits him from lawfully owning a firearm, correct? Yeah. Okay. So prohibited person. So at the end of the day, that's a win for us, right? right? You know, we we are a retailer. We are we are here to sell firearms to Washington citizens legally and responsibly. We want to sell as many guns as we can, um, but we want to do it legally and responsibly. That was a win for us. That Huge was win. that was one less gun that got on the streets in a bad fashion. Right. But here here's the thing that I want people to realize is, and this is the unique thing about the FFL industry and why they really are the last line of defense. Number one you were able to get immediate action taken because of this relationship that your company and you personally have with law enforcement. You're literally on a phone with a patrol officer in another jurisdiction in less than two hours, and they're doing a welfare check on mm -hmm. this young lady, who clearly I think we all realize, hey, that was a good thing to do, right? So, you know, the, 
uh, again, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a husband and I'm a father. And when I see a young lady, you know, in her 20s, um, with tears rolling down her eyes, thanking me for not delivering a right. firearm. The father in me, like I melt at that right. point. Like right. there's, there's something going on here that's something that's not right. So um, again, that's, that's a win. That's a true win. And this is, this is what I'm trying to get all the viewers to understand is that we got an attorney general claiming that we have a gun violence problem because of a bunch of rogue firearms dealers. But the bottom line is, is the last line of defense, the last line of defense to all of our safety, the last line of defense to keeping firearms out of the hands of people who should not have them are guys like BZ and everyone else here working at Wade's Guns, and let's face it, but for your discretionary actions, because legally speaking, she could have walked out here, but without that expertise that your professionals have here and that you have, this gun would have been in the hands of the wrong person that was probably going to do the wrong things with it. Yeah, yeah, and, and again, you know, not so much kudos to me, uh, a lot of kudos to my guys. We have a very, very good staff here that knows what they're looking for. Um, and I know many, many owners and many, many man managers of other retail stores. And it's the same story. They're, they're people behind the counters. They, they know what they're talking about when it comes to firearms, and they yeah. know what they're talking about when it comes to paperwork. And you guys share information, right? Like mm -hmm. you probably called a few other gun dealers in the air and said, hey, watch out for this guy. He was just in here. He tried to pull this. So, you know, some of your other competitors in the I, area probably heard about this, didn't they? I can neither uh, confirm nor deny that um, bad people are known in, in, in the grapevine the, goes quickly. The, the grapevine, the game of telephone goes real fast. So, All right. yeah. All right. Well, hey, listen, BZ, thanks for your time. Thanks Thank for everything you so much. that you guys yep. did here. And seriously, thanks for doing the right thing. Yeah. Okay, like I said, I want to really, really thank Harlan and Hope from The Range in Yakima. All of their information is in the description box down below. Check them out. And then, of course, I also want to thank my good friend at BZ over at Bellevue Indoor Range and Wade's Eastside Guns. We will put all of their information in the description box down below. And, hey, check out BZ on Instagram. He's got a really, really good account. Listen, you may have more questions about what Attorney General Ferguson is, is trying to do to this industry, the industry that actually is the last line of defense to ensure our safety. If you do, you should know how to contact Washington Gun Law by now. But if you don't, hey, all of that information is in the description box as well. In the meantime, I do want all of you to remember that part of being a lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.